And welcome back to Janky AF. Now here we have a very cute 2010 Ford Focus in a whimsical shade of what I'm calling chartreuse mint. Now not surprisingly, this car used to be owned by a grandmother, but what may surprise you is now it's owned by a musician, Carl. And when you think of musicians and creative types, uh, a 2010 Ford Focus may not spring to mind, but I'm here to tell you that it's actually the perfect vehicle for such an application and an owner. And here's why. The Ford Focus debuted in the year 2000 model year and was offered as a three-door hatchback, four-door wagon, and five-door estate or station wagon. In Europe, where it was named European Car of the Year, a performance version was offered called the Focus RS. The Europeans also received an entirely different second generation Ford Focus, while we Americans were given this car, an unofficial second generation that was built on the same platform as the original and debuted in 2008, running until 2011. The wagon version was gone, but a fairly rare two-door coupe was offered. Despite only lasting four model years, this car is ubiquitous, especially here in upstate New York, where they can be seen offering their drivers spacious, fuel-efficient, comfortable, and cheap transportation. Deemed by some as compliance cars, meaning they are only sold to increase the overall average fuel economy of the brand at large, it's even been said that Ford is not concerned about losing money on their manufacturing and sales, because it allows them to make huge profits on gas-guzzling luxury trucks and SUVs. Taking this into consideration, the Focus can be seen as a great purchase because its design mission incentivized excellent fuel economy while also de-incentivizing cheaping out on it due to budget and profit concerns. This particular Focus has come into the hands of my good friend Carl, and if you would like to support his band Han Zolo's upcoming album, which you are listening to right now, you can do so by finding a link to their Kickstarter down below. We hope you enjoy this little drive, and as always, janky do thank you. Up, jank heads. All right, and welcome back to Janky AF. Here we have this wonderful. What year is this again? I think it's a 2011. Uh, check the year. As is tradition in Janky AF, not knowing what year the car is. Let's see. 2010 Focus. 2010 Ford Focus, and what I'm calling a stunning. Uh, Chartreuse mint. Ah, you like that? That's nice. I now, call, I call it the cream green the dream cre machine. Ooh, the cream green dream machine. So we're gonna take a little jaunt as this Chevy Chevy Potato <laughs> car and driver called that. It's the Chevy Trax, also known as the Buick um, Encore, I believe. And uh, car and driver famously called it the. Buick that looks like a potato. <laughs> so our 2010 Ford Focus. Now I have been lusting after driving this car for some time and uh, Carl who drives this car and you got it, did you get it from your grandmother? Yeah I bought it when my grandmother passed away. Um, my mom offered it to me. When we were clearing out our house we were just like sort of looking at this car and she just goes, do you want it? I'm like yes I do. So I, I bought it off her, and I was super excited at the time that it was just offered to me. I wasn't yeah. expecting it, and um, got it for a really good deal. So. And this is another great car, and so many great cars are great because they're born of circumstance. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will inherit a car, they need a car, it sort of is passed on from a family member, something like that. And what I like about that is that it's not something you would have necessarily chosen and it sort of chooses you. I know that's cliched, but then you're forced into getting to know and getting to appreciate all, uh, you know, the quirks and features for lack of a better phrase. Oh, now, we yeah. are getting some nice dashboard rattle here yeah. on first impressions. It does feel very solid. The steering's actually a little heavier than I would have thought. It's almost got, you know, a very nice weight to the steering. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that's not because the power steering is broken, but just a nice factory weight to the steering. Mm. Uh, let's uh, get right to it and goose it a little bit. <laughs> I don't think this car is turbocharged, but it does have a little bit of lag. The, the power is very 
linear, <laughs> if not reluctant. Um, but we're cruising easily at 60. It's uh, fairly quiet. Um, we have a 6,500 uh, RPM red line. Now, now this Focus, when the original Focus came out, it had those real chiseled headlights, a lot of triangles going on. It was kind of, um, even if you, you know, this is gonna be a stretch, but if you look back to the Ford GT90, just a legendary, legendary car from Need for Speed, that car was all about <laughs> triangles. And a lot of times concept cars like that are sort of proof of concept or a preview of what the design ethos of the, the entire spectrum of cars in a brand's lineup will look like. And I love the first Focus. I thought it was the coolest, subcompact car since the Dodge and Plymouth and Chrysler Neon, um, a car that I also really, really love because we had one and it was in this beautiful teal and it had a five-speed manual. It had no power steering. It was a little runabout, a little race car. And when my father uh, sold that car for a song before I was at the driving age, of course, I was devastated and I've been lusting after one ever since. And, th and the Focus reminded me of that. Now, of course, this is the uh, facelifted, I don't know if it's technically a new generation, it probably is, but the facelifted Focus, second generation if you want to call it that. And initially, I have a real love-hate relationship with facelifts in the automotive industry. I think a lot of times they just take everything that was good about the car and tweak it into a, into a position where it just seems like not quite original, but derivative. It's, it's it looks enough like the first generation that you can kind of pin it down and for brand identity, I get all that. But I always thought this thing was such a sort of a letdown of the first generation in, in the looks department. But now looking at it and seeing these very, very crisp lines on it, um, I, I've really come to appreciate it. The front fascia with the added chrome, I feel like putting chrome on a subcompact car is kind of like you're kind of trying to make it something it isn't. But be that as it may, I, I do I have really come to appreciate the styling of this car. Now it's fitting that Carl bought this uh, from his late grandmother or grandmother's estate because this is the quintessential grandmother car. In fact, <laughs> my 92 year old neighbor Dottie has this exact Ford Focus except it's in a much more demure silver. Uh, and, I, and I really do like that Ford put some sort of whimsical colors in their yeah. bevy of uh, choices that you could make. And, and certainly this uh, cream, dr cream green dream machine uh, or chartreuse mint, as I'm calling it, is, is I would say it has to be very the minty. best color. Yes, very minty, very refreshing, very bubbly, very whimsical, and that's what I think a Chevy, uh, um, I was gonna say a Chevy Sonic, uh, what a subcompact car should be. I think it should be fun, it should be whimsical, it should be like a little bubbly, effervescent runabout. And the other theme that I wanted to touch on here as we're uh, proceeding to McDonald's because uh, Carl and I have had many conversations about McDonald's and fast food and so it's only fitting that we go to the McDonald's drive through and attempt, probably in vain, to order some ice cream. Mm -hmm. because, I should say, I cheated because I was there um, yesterday or the day before, so I might know the answer to the question. Okay, well we'll leave it up for suspense. Yes, we will. Um, I have a feeling I know what it's going to be, but maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. We'll see. <laughs> I really like... Uh, so, so back to the grandmother card thing. So it is the quintessential grandmother card, but the theme I wanted to derive, and I think what the title of this video is going to be, uh, spoiler alert to you, Carl, is yeah. it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. As we pass the beautiful red uh, Mustang Mach-E there, check out that review on JNKAF. Jake, do thank you. So I think, you know, Audi had a slogan recently that was intelligence is the new rock and roll wow which to be honest sounds like a bunch of pretentious bullshit but <laughs> as marketing slogans usually are uh -huh. um but i have to say there is something to that and i think carl being a musician could go out and buy a 1989 Camaro and uh, you know feel very cool and suave but he could also you know let his music and his musicianship and his uh, creative um, expression do the talking and I think in this day and age a little old grandma Ford Focus 
is actually a perfect car for a musician because it's reliable, it's practical, you're gonna get good mileage when you're driving all over the place to play gigs. Mm. So I think that, ironically, there's nothing more rock and roll than a grandma car. And if you think about rock and roll classically, rock and roll is very janky. Like, go, go back and listen to an old Blue Oyster Cult album, one of my favorite, most underrated bands of all time. <laughs> And if you listen to the production, it's very good, it's very engaging, but it's so far from perfect. But it allows for, you know, there's nobody's playing to a click or anything like that, so you'll see the drummer will start to bring the tempo down, especially on a long, winding song like Astronomy, um, and then bring it back up. And everything is very dynamic, everything is very, um, you know, it's rocking and rolling. It has this sway about it, it has this bounce about it. Um, so I think in that way, rock and roll is, very janky it's very raw it's very live and um so this car is very janky and very live too so i think it's actually a perfect fit and not at all ironic and in this day and age like this is a perfect perfect car for a musician or any creative type and i think that again like i've said you let the expression of your individual self do the talking as we got a chevy uh, aveo another great subcompact wow. and we have crank windows here oh, yeah. always good in case you drive off of a pier Yep. And my, um, my grandmother custom ordered them with, with crank windows. With the crank. Look at that. That is a beautiful, beautiful touch. <laughs> Specifying that, that you want you know, crank windows. That's like windows. a older person thing where they don't trust, you know, maybe they don't trust the new technology. They Absolutely. Want, they want the analog. One less thing to break. Yep. All right. So now we are going to pull into the drive through here. Did we order uh, here? Yep. What are you going to get? I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, yes, one second, please. Okay. Let me get something simple. Yeah, fire away. Let me get a six piece nugget with buffalo sauce and barbecue sauce and a, okay. and a vanilla cone. I will have one hamburger, please. All right. And I will have a chocolate, actually I will have two chocolate milkshakes. Uh, medium, small, large? Both medium, please. Okay, two chocolate shakes. And um, one with whipped cream, one without, please. Okay. I think that'll do it for us. All right, thank you. First window, 1347. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, where's my, uh, phone toggle there. Are you ordering for two or are you just feeling hungry? I'm gonna get Julia a milkshake there because she loves a chocolate milkshake. So the ice cream machine is back up and running. It's good. How long has it been? It's, Months. They've been, they've been pretty good about it for a while because I, you know, I come in every week. I don't stop eating ice cream just because it gets cold out. No, no, ice cream <clears> sustains <throat> you in the winter. That window? Interesting. We are, yeah, we're taking the scenic route. Oh, here, this window here. Oh, I'm sorry. You are the first window, but I was just, I was uh, confused yeah, by the number first one. Window, first window, the <laughs> Where are you guys from? Well, we're locals. Oh, you are local? Yep. Gotcha. Have you seen this beautiful mint car driving I around? I have not. This is the first time seeing it, but when I saw the cameras, I was... Yeah, we're actually filming a review right now. The, the lakes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe I'll take a drive down the uh, west side of the lake later. All right, take care now. Your seating position, even though it's a subcompact, is relatively high, I must say. And when you're going to a drive up window or a bank teller window, you know, I just bought a 2002 Jetta for $10, and of course, you can watch that video. And that thing rides very low. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a second on the rest. All right, appreciate it. I went to the bank in that Jetta the other day and you can't believe how low you're sitting. Now eating the ice cream cone with a mustache, I found to be Oh yeah, well it's, once it starts to curl over. But I figured it out. <laughs> you got I'll it? Tell you what, yep. Constant uh, napkinning. Mm -hmm. Now we do have a couple lights on, ABS lights Thank on. You, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Now we can't make a left turn here. There's another uh, beautiful Ford Focus, and that's <laughs> in a little burgundy there. And uh, it does have a little bit of rocker panel rust on mm -hmm. it. Surprise, surprise. I have seen so many of these focuses and I've tried to document them. So hopefully we can put a little screen roll of different focuses that I've seen in here. Mm. And even the ones that look like they're in pristine condition everywhere else have rocker panel rust going on. And in fact, Carl just told me, he just took this to the mechanic and they said, it's probably not going to pass inspection. Yep. With a whopping 58,000 miles on it. Yep. Now, part of that is due to just being in the Northeast, but I gotta say this car in particular seems like it did have some serious uh, rust control issues because it seems so um, endemic. Is that the right word? So it's natural. very stagnant. I don't know what word you were going for but like something that's um sort of a tokenistic sign of a particular thing mm. <clears throat> well check me on that youtube community <laughs> well i know my grandmother didn't drive this car very often oh thank you and do we get a straw i don't know do you have that yeah there's a little idle rumble going on here yeah um stuff happening. We're going to goose it one more time just for you folks at home. It happily goes up to the red line. It actually charges pretty nice. Certainly not anything to write home about, but you know, you got enough to pass or to merge if you need to in a, in a, in a GIF. We'll, we'll crank up our window here. But I am impressed with the handling. Now, the interior we have to talk about, I think this is, uh, it's definitely peak mid-aughts, you know, 2010s. Mm. Uh, you know, Kobe was at the top of his game. And um, yeah, for sure. And um, your, your speedometer and tachometer, you have gas, temperature, which it's running nice and cool, I will say that. Um, but the speedometer tachometer, incredibly busy. The font is all done up with a, you know, reds and grays and blacks and these sort of faux chrome aluminum gauges. Mm -hmm. I will say I love the center console panel because I love when a car can simultaneously look very cheap and yet look <laughs> lit very refined at the same time. <clears throat> like this weird aluminum plastic was definitely all the rage in this era, mm. but one of my, um, when I reviewed another uh, Mark IV Jetta, I liked it because all the plastic was very, very sort of subtle and well integrated. And with the exception of these giant knobs, which are a little bulbous and a little clunky, everything else is very nicely integrated. It's, it's funny how small the buttons are for, in comparison to the just vast amounts space. of silver and space <laughs> that you have here. You have a That's CD true. player, which is very nice. CD player with crank windows, again, a very nice uh, combination. You have a little clock up here that I like. I like this sort of like very basic digital gauges. Um, so that's very nice. Overall, uh, uh, a, a quite a nice place to be. Um, and a lot of different colors going on. Now I think a good way to sort of make a cheap interior be a little bit more um, pleasing to the eye is just not to have everything just all in one color monochromatic it's usually like a dark gray black and even though these are cheap plastics they have you know you have your light gray almost a green hue which kind of matches the outside then you have your black then you have your silver then you have some red in the gauges so it does a good job of breaking everything up and having everything it's almost like ikea you know you have like a lot of different things going on so it kind of gives it a little bit of character and a little bit of uh provenance even i like that the the door handles are in this like little square panel here everything all the lines integrate very nice and i do think they do a great job of sort of keeping with the angular triangular styling of this car your lock gauges are nice and big kind of bulky and clunky but on the lock gauges i think it's nice because you can't really miss it if you want to lock or unlock the car i love this little focus badging that's inside the glove compartment or airbag area there that's very nice and and what i love about this car sort of like the proof of concept. I love when cars are thematically um, cohesive or thematically, they have continuity thematically. And focus is very crisply integrated. And then you have this nice line that sort of bisects the whole um, 
front of the console area. So everything is very sharp and everything is very crisp. You may even say it's in focus. Hey, okay. yeah, this kind of indenture thing like you're talking about is also on the Yeah, and then where the line the where the line comes across the dashboard and you have your black vent in your sort of tan panel here, which is a nice another nice little color contrast. And the bottom line comes right into this center console, which sort of dips around there. What was that? I don't know. And we've just struck something in the road. <laughs> suspension seems to have handled it well. Now, I guess the mechanic said the suspension was also a problem in the... Yeah, uh, there's some kind of issue there. I remember in... See, um, I don't really know much about cars. I'm, I like cars. And so I'm just sitting here. I'm, I've been smiling the entire time. I love hearing you talk about it because these are not things I think about and I think it's awesome. Well, you're gonna know because it's all about I the know. nuance and the details. It looks like you do have a Bluetooth feature, although I wonder if that's uh, accurate. Steering wheel, very nice. Almost looks a little upscale. Um, very comfortable and it's fairly thin, which I like. It's a three spoke. Yeah. Your shifter is... Um, there is overdrive. Oh, there's an overdrive setting. I don't even know what that really means, but it sounds. Oh, it's just like fast another. Furious <laughs> slide, <so I> like <laughs> kind of the opposite, actually. It's like when oh, okay. you're cruising on the highway when you want to do lower RPMs. Okay. Um, although you could say it's kind of a performance thing too. I guess that's that's fair. Gotcha. Um, you, yeah, the overdrive buttons on the side. Um, I will say the shifter action's nice and tight. Um, and it's got this almost like little pistol grip feel to it. It's a little sporty. It's a little low down, but not a bad reach. So ergonomically, the, the seats, you know, I haven't driven for 10 hours straight in this car, but the seats feel very supportive, very bolstered. Do you find that? I do, yeah. It doesn't I think give you a bad I have to adjust it to get it sort of just right to where I like it. And sometimes if I get it in the wrong spot, then it's hard to find the, the uh, Goldilocks spot. But does, it have, does it have a crank? Oh, it's got a little lever. It's got a little lever that kind of scooches you up and down. And okay. So all manual features, but again, one less thing to break, you know. I, I think, especially in a subcompact car or a compact car, you, you know, you don't really. It, it's a functional, ergonomic thing that you want to be reliable and that you want to get you from A to B in a in a modicum of comfort. But, you know, I really think, and it's a cliched thing to say, but the lack of, you know, abundant technology is is something that I think people are actually lusting after now because it's it's just. A little more simple, a little more basic. Mm. And I appreciate that. A couple dead buttons here. Looks like you had some features that weren't in this car, which makes sense with it being sort of the standard base model. I, I love a base model. My favorite button is this one. The Max AC. Max AC. And how is the AC in this car? It's good. It works, so it blows hot and cold. It maxes out. <laughs> that was our train track test. Not bad overall. I gotta say, it's... um doesn't feel it feels pretty tight like it doesn't now that me only because it only has 58,000 miles on it but um doesn't feel loosey-goosey aside from a little bit of dash rattle it's 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 a very comfortable place to be and, and the heat definitely works well i want to uh maybe put us through just a couple of bends here to see how we handle and then we'll go back to home base and wrap up friend 
had a Focus in high school, and so I didn't drive until I was about 21, 22. I didn't have my own car. Wow. Um, and he, that was like the car that we romped around in and did hood rat stuff in. You sure. Know. I love that. I love that. So it was special. Yeah, so so here we have, and now the Focus, the ZX3 of the first generation Focus, and I believe in Europe they got like a little hotter Focus ST, although we may have got something like that here. Um, it was sort of a real uh, performance bargain in that upmarket sort of performance version of it, um, but even in the base version, I feel like this car, and, it, and it's hard for a compact car to do this, but I feel like Ford really sort of managed to make, much like I guess the Honda Fit, a compact car that still had some personality to that. And I think that's sort of like an achievement unto itself. Because these things are often derided. You know, the Toyota Corolla recently uh, achieved the status as the most manufactured car of all time. There's there's more Toyota Corollas ever been produced than any other car. I think even than the huh. Volkswagen Beetle, 20 million some. Um, and these cars always get sort of cited as you know, just anonymous little boxes that have no personality or character, and I think that's really not true. And while they may not be considered aspirational cars than many, like Carl said, they do leave an indelible impression upon the people that have them. And, and that's my whole thing with every car is a great car, is that it's more about, of course it's about the car, but it's, it's about you too, and it's about mm how the car impacts you, how you grow to love the car, how you grow to, it's just like a song. And going back to the musician thing, when you listen to a song, you're really like, there's songs I can't even listen to anymore because they take me back to a time and place that, whether it's heartbreak or whether it's depression or whatever it is, that it cuts so deep and it puts you instantly right back there. And I think much like music, cars do the same exact thing is that they put you in a time and place and they make you remember and they give you this sense of nostalgia and whether it's good or bad, it's a deep emotional feeling that you can't get with many other things. So as we move forward into electrification and, and probably the biggest change in the automotive landscape that we've seen since the invention of the internal combustion engine, mm -hmm. um, I hope that, you know, somewhere, the, it's like Noah's Ark. I hope two of every model sticks around forever because I think that every car has its place in the automotive history and especially cars like this that were built to be, they were built to a budget, they were built to sell in large quantities and to perform a function that, that to some people may seem very basic and may seem very forgettable. But, you know, in the quality versus quantity uh, discussion, sometimes quantity does have uh, a value to it. Sometimes a car that can just be cranked out in mass numbers and be built to a budget really has value because for many people, the simple act of mobility and having something that can get them, you know, further than five miles away is very, very valuable. And I think we should not forget that when we think about cars like a 2010 Ford Focus. Yeah, just a pleasure. Just a real a real fun little ditty to bop around in. Again, I've said it again and again, but I am I am impressed with this car's stealing, uh, handling, um, steering. It's a little shaky when you go over a bump or something like that. Um, I noticed that there are uh, these wheels, and I'll hopefully have to research this a little more, but these wheels are four lug wheels, which is kind of funny. You don't see many cars with uh, four lug wheels anymore. My Fiat X19 has four lugs, and most, almost every car is, you know, even subcompacts are um, a five lug wheel. So that's kind of funny. It's a little, probably a cost saving measure, but again, it, it probably doesn't need the fifth uh, lug on there. So I appreciate that. The hubcaps are, you know, very funny, trying to be like everything else in this car, probably trying to be a little bit more than they are. <laughs> but in totality, it all adds up to a, a spunky little whimsical package um, and truly a great car. So I hope that it can uh, pass inspection and I hope that you dump uh, an impractical amount of money in this car to keep it going because <laughs> it only has 58,000 miles and, I, and I'd like to see it around mm. for uh, years to come. So with that, thank you very much, Carl.
Absolutely. A real pleasure. And uh, <laughs> what this whole video is supposed to be, and I completely forgot to mention, is that Han Zolo is releasing their second album December 17th. And uh, we will splice some clips in, and um, it's a banging album. It's really great. They've released two singles, two singles, right? Yep. Thus far, um, they sound amazing. They just opened for the Whalers, the legendary Whalers. Uh, they're on their way, um, and it's a really fun, um, I guess, danceable. People say, I don't know. You can't talk about music with words. You just gotta listen. Mm. So hopefully, you've already heard okay. a couple of tracks, and. Um, Stay tuned for more, and they are doing a Kickstarter, so they're almost to their goal. They got their band member Nick just ate 12 hot dogs, so they're laying it all out there for you, the listener, for your enjoyment. And um, you know, entertainers are really in the service industry because they provide you with joy, they provide you with dynamic movement, they provide you from a little escape from the world for a while, and uh, we should all do our best to support them. Um, and not even out of charity, but because they're already giving us something, so we should give back to them. So, that's the 2010 Ford Focus. Um, this is Janky AF. We'd love if you subscribed or commented. We've been getting great engagement lately. We're on our way to, uh, we just passed 150 subscribers. Mm. Um, Hit that bell. <laughs> Smash that Smash bell. Smash that bell. Smash that bell. bell. Gently, delicately <laughs> pummel that like button. And we'll um, see you for the next one. Janky, do thank you. Don't be gotta keep talking <laughs> when you, you know you're wrapping it up as you pull in you got the you got the touch you got the touch <clears throat> you know that song transformers you got the, you touch. Got the power <laughs> Ooh, the mariah menu oh mariah curry i guess so yeah i love the celebrity uh collabs that yeah, mcdonald's is doing it's interesting i wanted to invent the beef janky meal that yeah. was just like two apple pies and a coffee. <laughs>